gang, Spada here, and today we are taking a look at the Walmart exclusive Deluxe Optimus Prime. Found him at uh, one of my local Walmarts here, and uh, he wasn't actually on the shelf with the normal figures. He was on one of the end caps, and that end cap was filled with these things. There must have been, a, I'd say, 20 or 30 of them. So, uh, here's the back of the box. We're going to open them up and uh, take a look at them. So here we have Prime out of the box. Now he is a standard deluxe class sized figure. He does look a little bit lanky, but that lankiness is simply because of the transformation and because, well, his alternate mode, getting him into that alternate mode, you kind of need to be a little lanky in order to fit. He does have a, uh, a standard Prime face. It's actually really well detailed in there, and I really do like that, along with the rest of the figure. The rest of the figure is very well detailed. Uh, even on the inside of his uh, torso, it's very, very well detailed all around. I really do appreciate that. He does have a very big backpack. Uh, this is more reminiscent to the original 2007 Voyager class um, Prime, who had a very similar backpack. It does cause some issues while standing, though. If he has his legs straight, he's fine. But as soon as you start fooling around with the posability, he does have some very big top head or falling down issues. And that's because of uh, one main big issue that I found with the figure. If you look here at the feet, this hinge is actually much lower than the actual feet. So there's they don't really line up all that well. And that causes the back heavy problem with him falling down a lot. But I have found that if you take the mech tech gun and actually have the mech tech gun in one of his hands, it completely counterbalances, counters the heaviness from uh, this rear uh, backpack. Now the mech tech gun is actually pretty cool. I don't know why uh, yellow is used in this. I guess it's simply because hey, it's got to have a yellow or orange tip to be a gun in the U.S. But uh, it is very, very cool. You could be shooting, and then you could just axe them, and then you could go to shooting again. I really dig that. Now, it does look a little silly on the side, but if you're holding it in your right hand like this, you could use it as a block, and then you could axe him, and then you could use it as a, block, a blocking weapon again. Now, I have noticed a couple of times where I'll let it go, and it doesn't go back all the way, so you just tap it in, but that's with all the mech tech weapons. Posability for this guy is really good. He's got a ball joint here in the shoulder, and this shoulder pad does move, so you can get some really good uh, poses there. He's got a swivel joint in the upper arm, a double, a double hinge joint in the elbow, uh, but then, unfortunately, his fists do not move. The head just has a swivel, and it moves up and down, so he could be doing a robotic headbang. Legs, there is a ball joint in the hip, a swivel joint in the upper leg, a joint in the 90, that bends 90 degrees at the knee, and then his feet move. They slide, but they uh, move. That's because of the transformation, but it actually really helps with posing in some instances. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy's transformation. I have found the transformation for this figure to be fun and enjoyable. It's not too hard, but it's not too easy either, and it's really interesting to see how things go. You can kind of guess, but it's still really a lot of fun. So we'll start off with the, uh, with the top here, or with the uh, head and shoulders. Now one thing I didn't mention um, earlier was these bits right here are pegged in and they're not going anywhere. Though you see this flexibility, this comes into play with a, a gimmick he has. What you do is you actually push the head down when you transform it, and then when you plug the back in, the backpack in, it'll pop the head up. So what we'll do is we'll disengage the backpack, which just folds right off, and push the head down until it locks into place. Now, one thing we need to be aware of is there are tabs. You see these gray tabs here and here, just where my thumbs are. The pipes, or the stacks, actually fit over those tabs, and it is a little bit of an annoyance to get that plugged in. I mean, I'm doing it easily, but I'm actually lifting the part up and then just trying to line it up, and I just pop the head up. So it is a little bit of annoying to get that bit in, but once it's in, it's not going anywhere. 
Next, what we're going to do is fold the fist completely up like that. And we'll do that over here as well. Now, the direction say to flip it like this, but that really doesn't serve any purpose because later you're just going to turn them around again. What you'll do next is put your... Th what I like to do, actually, is stop the head from popping up. That's the biggest problem I have with this figure is this trigger right here for the head pop, for the head deploy gimmick. And just get these bits lined up again. This does get a little bit annoying, but once you get it, it's pretty good. To, it's pretty good. So while pushing this in, flip these around like that. Once you do that, you should be able to just kind of get things lined up so that, well, okay, so you have to lift that up and just turn the legs around 180 degrees. So we'll rotate these in. There are tabs. There's a tab slot here up top. And there are two tabs on the back here that'll fit into that the tab slot. And when you do that, you just bring this whole section together and just tab everything together. Now when transforming it back into robot mode, that is the hardest part to do, is to get these pieces out from this area. And as you can see, there's already some paint damage from, I guess, a tester or something. So we tab those two together, and we're pretty much almost done the cab. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Moving over to the feet, take the wheel on the inside of the foot, and these are pegged in pretty tight. You have to unpeg them and just flip them down, like that. Then take the feet, rotate them all the way in, like that, and then... Whoop, Take this whole section and flip it down, and it'll peg into place. So unpeg that whole section, flip it over the wheel, and peg into place. Now what we do is we come in here and kind of wiggle the... You see how the this gray piece is pegged in here? Just kind of unpeg it, and then you'll be able to slide the leg up like that. So we'll do the same thing over here. Just unpeg it slide it on its whatever hinge joints is on, pull it up like that, and then connect the two parts. Now originally I thought, oh you're supposed to just bend it, well wait, that doesn't work. Well actually what you do is you come under here and you take the entire hip crotch section and unfold it underneath the cab section. And this is coming apart on me. And then there are these pegs right here that are part of the forearm, they peg in right up here. So something I forgot to show you. When you fold the leg, the bottom leg, and collapse it up, there's actually a peg hole right there that, a pe that pegs into, and if you don't peg it in, you're not going to be able to finish the transformation. So now everything should line up correctly. And like I said earlier, it just takes a little bit of force to get it plugged in. And finally, we just slide the front of the vehicle back, and we are done. So here he is in vehicle mode. And you could place the uh, mech tech gimmick weapon on top, or just any other mech tech weapon will fit up there. So. This is probably one of the best primes I have ever gotten a hold of. I would say um, the leader class from the 2007 movie, the leader class from Revenge of the Fallen, and this guy are, if you're going to buy three primes, the, those are the three to get. This is a fantastic figure. Yes, he has some small issues, specifically being the um, top heaviness and the crappy feet, not crappy, but poorly engineered feet in robot mode. But he looks good. He's a lot of fun, and I'd much rather have this guy than the Voyager figure from Dark of the Moon. This guy is a much, be much better figure. Transforming him back into robot mode is easy and fun, and just, you know what? It's not hard at all, and I'm making it, and I'm screwing it up already. Oh boy. Oh, no. Let's try that again. Now, I have already popped this um, bit off of this track, 
it's a pain to get it back on, but you can do it. The only thing, as you just saw, you kind of have to do things in order with this guy. If you don't, you're, you will run into problems, and you could break the figure, as you just saw me almost do. But, then again, you could do that with any Optimus figure. I mean, especially from the movie lines. Especially with the Revenge of the Fallen Leader class figure. Okay, now we're getting to the part that I was talking about earlier. You just have to force it. There's no other way. And that's a very loud snap you heard. And that's the only way it's going to work. Uh, you just have to do it that way. So we will play, pick those in. Get them up. And then flip up that. And there we go. So as I was saying, this figure is great. I absolutely dig this figure. He's in Walmarts everywhere. Um, you're not going to have trouble finding him because he's a Walmart exclusive. Uh, he's all over the place. Unfortunately, in Target, Target exclusives are a little bit harder to find. But the Walmart exclusives, they're everywhere. So go ahead and pick this one up. I picked him up at my local Walmart and totally, totally worth picking this guy up.